The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. It's another episode of the Short Time Wrestling Podcast. My name is Jason Bryant, back from the Midlands and trying to thaw out in what has been an absolutely freezing cold December and now into January. Once again, my name is Jason Bryant. Thank you for listening. This is the Short Time Wrestling Podcast, where I bring you pretty much uh, weekly news, reviews, previews, and interviews from all the topics or in and around the world of wrestling, this being the college wrestling season. Uh, a lot of it's college wrestling news, reviews, previews, and say it with me now, interviews. So a little different today. I've been doing the short time shots. I last one I had done was on the 16th of December. I could have done them at Midlands, but it, it was just a, a bit of of a struggle in terms of by the time we got out of there, get dinner. It was it was like midnight before my, my work got done. So uh, in lieu of, you know, I was actually kind of paid to be there as the announcer. So uh, do I do I struggle, make my voice struggle uh, on somebody else's dime, no. So I, I just kind of laid low with the Midlands as uh, we fired back up. Spent this afternoon, as I'm recording this on Tuesday, January 2nd, of course, as the date would indicate on this show. Just spent the last uh, couple hours finishing up with Mike Moyer on the World Wrestling Resource Podcast, which talks about the topic that I'm going to discuss today, the non well, actually the multi-divisional national duels. That is available at mattalkonline.com slash WWR50, or the... World Wrestling Resource Podcast, which is sponsored by Defense Soap at WWRpodcast.com. Be sure to check that out. I talked with Mike Moyer, who's my old boss. Actually, it was as we talk about it, it was like I left the NWCA 10 years ago, which is like crazy to think about. I it's it, it seems like it's been a, a, a lot less time than that since I was running uh, the media relations in uh, Intermat mainly. Uh, Intermat was mainly the title, even though they gave me the title of media relations director or something back then. Oddly enough, it's kind of the title I actually still have with the NWCA as I facilitate the weekly press releases with the Division I coaches poll. And, of course, uh, what the topic is going to be on this particular show, I'm actually going to go roll through and I'm going to go books on tape on you here in a little bit and break down the multi-divisional national duels. So, uh, anyway, I had a chance to talk with Mike, a great guy, uh, about 30 minutes on that episode of the World Wrestling Resource Podcast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to meld the short-time shots which is normally, you know, that that rundown, and the spoken word solo show that uh, some people do quite often here in this glorious space that we call podcasting. And I'm just going to roll with it and break down the research, the data, and things on why you should pay attention to the official title of the event, which is, hold on, let me take a deep breath. <sighs> deep breath, deep breath. United World Wrestling Group hosts the 2018 National Wrestling Coaches Association Multi-Divisional National Duels presented by Applied Silver in Body Theraworks of the United States Marine Corps. That is the official name of the event. That is not going in the show title. We're just going to call it Matt Mayhem. So I'm just going to go on a roll here and a uh, little, little, book, little books on tape. Or uh, I'm not going to quite go all things considered. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it in the short time shots, kind of uh, the pep and the step. So... If you've already read this, you may want to continue on, but this will save you some time. This, uh, the release and the notes here from NWCA Online, written by yours truly. And let's see how bad I can stumble over my own words. Are you ready? I said, are you? No, I'm just kidding. I was channeling my inner uh, Jonathan Davis from Corn. Are you ready? Which actually, I actually saw them a couple months ago. It had been 20 years since I'd seen Corn. Anyway, you're not here to hear about my musical things or, uh, or the weather. Well, actually, you follow me and you get the weather. Anyway, are, are we ready yet? Are we ready yet? It's 2018. I'm ready for this. You are listening to the Short Time Wrestling Podcast with my daddy, Jason Bryant. The past three years, the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum in Fort Wayne, Indiana, has been a very key location in the college wrestling landscape. In 2018, the United Wrestling Group will meet again to host the NWCA Multi-Divisional Nationals presented by Applied Silver, InBody, TheraWorks, and the United States Marine Corps on January 4th and 5th. That is a Thursday, Friday. And I wasn't kidding you. That is a very long name. 86 teams, 65 of them nationally ranked in five different divisions. The event will again live up to its moniker of Matt Mayhem. Oh, boy. 
Two stats that stand out to me as I put this all together, and that comes the quality of individuals competing. Of the 50 top-ranked individuals of the five divisions, so there's five divisions we're looking at the top individual rankings, so there's 50. 34 of them are in Fort Wayne. 345 nationally ranked wrestlers are expected to compete. Competition begins on Thursday at 9 a.m. Semifinals will be on Friday, 11 a.m., followed by championship rounds and placement. You can watch all this stuff before you even get to the details at TrackCast on TrackWrestling.com. It's 1995, and you get all five divisions, plus you get the college open that's run by New Way. And for those of you that are, are have some youth kids competing at the, uh, the New Way event, you get all that stuff to watch if you're going to watch your kids or your aunt, uncle, your aunt, uncle, your niece or nephew wrestle. Then you get the college stuff too. So if there's a crossover crowd, you're good stuff. If you're going to be in the Fort Wayne area and want tickets too, ha- no, I'm just kidding. If you're going to be in the Fort Wayne area and do need tickets, all session passes are forty bucks for students. They are thirty single day, are twenty and fifteen. So, you ready to talk about the teams? I am because I love this event. Things couldn't work out this year that. Uh, I could make it. Last year, actually, I was all set to go, but uh, my, my, my oldest got sick, so I had to spend uh, New Year's in the hospital. That wasn't fun. Anyway, which I say a lot. Have you noticed that's like one of my crutch words anyway? Used to be obvious, but obviously I'm going to get to this preview. Anyway, last year's Division Two bracket was as unpredictable and upset riddle as any in the event's history. Those type of scenarios are never truly expected, and it gives fans a reason to keep an eye on every round of competition. You like how I'm laying this on thick? Three-time champion St. Cloud State looks to repeat. The top-ranked Huskies have finished in the top three six straight seasons, and you've heard this stat before, folks. They have won 136 of their last 145 duels. I think that's how my math is right. I think my math is probably off. I think it's 136 of 143, to be honest with you. But again, do math. St. Cloud State will open against 15th-ranked Lake Erie College in the opening round with a winner facing 9th-ranked Indianapolis or unranked Kutztown. Lake Erie finished 7th a year ago, a program best. 3rd-ranked Ashland will enter as the number 2 seed. The Eagles will open with 25th-ranked Seton Hill. That's Hill, not Hall. Uh, It's been a while since Ashland has had any notable success in the event. The last time the Eagles placed in the top 8 came back in 2006. Notre Dame College has won this event four times, twice in Division II and twice as an NAIA program. The Falcons, which come in ranked eighth, will open with 10th ranked Upper Iowa, and that showcases the depth of the Division II portion of this event as nine of the top ten teams are competing in Fort Wayne. Who's missing? UW Parkside. Fortunately, they're on probation this year, so you won't see them in the postseason or anything like this. Uh, Yeah, tough go for the Rangers this year. The winner of Notre Dame, Upper Iowa, will face the winner of Ashland and Seton Hill. In the bottom bracket, third-seeded Cal Baptist in its final year eligible to compete as Division II program. The Lancers Athletic Department will be beginning the transition to Division I next season, and Coach Lenny Zaleski, yep, that Lenny Zaleski, will try to claim the school's first NWCA National Duels title. The third-ranked Lancers open up with number 18, Gannon. And uh, as I was so corrected by our friend Brian Williams, our listener out there, Gannon's from uh, Zelda, not Metro. Mother Brain was Metro. Two of the culprits behind last year's shattered brackets, CSU Pueblo and Wheeling Jesuit, will meet in the first round. Yes, I love this type of stuff. High drama right off the bat. Last year, both teams were unseated, found their way in the semis, and Wheeling Jesuit made its way to the finals with a 21-20 win by criteria. Oh, man. The Thunder Wolves are ranked seventh this time around. Matter of fact, uh, in case you didn't wonder, CSU Pueblo, the Thunder Wolves. They formerly were known as the University of Southern Colorado. So in case you're you're a history buff, you're like, what is CSU Pueblo? And you know about Southern Colorado. Well, if you knew that, you probably knew that anyway. Uh, so if, anyway, if, if Wheeling Jesuit wants to make a return appearance, they're going to have to start out with another sizable upset. Winner will take on the winner of either Cal Baptist or Gannon. Fifth rank, McKendry opens up the, with number 13, Central Oklahoma. They are the Broncos with an H, like Stanley with a C. Uh, they'll open up with UCO in the opening round with a winner facing to advance the winner of Pitt Johnstown, Nebraska Kearney in the all-hyphen duel. Central Oklahoma won the first Division II crown back in 2002. And, you know, it's strange. I was, I was researching all this. Despite its stellar, stellar reputation as a formidable, wow, I'm using stellar and formidable in the same sentence, despite the reputation of being a really good dual meet team, uh, Pitt Johnstown coach Pat Pecora and the Mountain Cats have never won the event. They were third last year. Uh, Nebraska Kearney has two championships, the most recent coming in 2007. Individually, six number one wrestlers are in the field with 68 ranked in the top 12. There are five past national champions in the mix. 
Brett Velasquez at 125 pounds for St. Cloud State. Darren Wynn of McKendry at 41. Nebraska Carney's Keith Serber at 149. Pitt Johnstown's title, Reinhardt at 174. And Cal Baptist Andrew Schulte, who won a 141-pound title in the NAIA two years ago while wrestling for Concordia University, the one in Nebraska. Oh, that's just the Division II, folks, man. That's freaking awesome. I mean, I to pay attention to the Division II would be worth the price of admission. And I'm not saying that because I get a check from these guys. Anyway, since the addition of the multi-divisional aspect of the National Duels in 2002, Wartburg is the only college program in the country that's made the finals every single year. They've won 11 Division III National Duels championships, including the last seven in a row. Much like the dominance shown at the NCAA Division III championships for the past 20 years, the National Duels titles have been owned by two teams, Wartburg and its chief rival, Augsburg, which is now University, by the way, no longer Augsburg College. Division Three has the largest field with 24 teams competing. It makes sense. There's over 100 Division Three schools. The top eight seeds, Wartburg, Johnson & Wales. I'll talk about that in a second. Augsburg, Ithaca, Wisconsin-Whitewater, Wabash, Baldwin-Wallace, and Ferrum receive first-round buys and will await winners of preliminary round bouts. Wartburg's recently moving up to number one. They got a Eric DeVos back in the lineup. Kind of had an issue with that. Johnson Wales was number one last week. For some reason, without wrestling, either team without wrestling, Eric DeVos comes back and actually maybe, uh, you know, I'm going to double check this wall. This is bad podcasting. I'm going to go to OswegoLakers.com because that is where Oswego coach Mike Howard, who is the coordinator of the Division Three Wrestling Coaches Bowl, puts all the stuff. So I'm going to go over there to the wrestling tab. I'm going to go to NWCA polls. I'm going to see when that last ranking came out. That last ranking came out December 12th. Okay, so Wartburg did wrestle. I'm pretty sure they did wrestle. The Desert Duels, yeah. So I'm just going to make sure I I could stop and edit, but I'm on a roll, man. I'm just going to go here. Schedule. Uh, yeah, okay. So, do, do, do. yeah, Desert Duels. They beat Embry-Riddle, Concordia, and Warner Pacific and lost one more. They'd have beaten those teams that bad anyway. So Eric DeVos back in the lineup for Wartburg has pushed them to number one, uh, despite Johnson Wales being undefeated and not doing anything to lose it. So I kind of have an issue with Wartburg being one, uh, although that uh, for those of you who like the wartburg Augsburg thing, that puts them on opposite sides. But uh, they would have been the two, three if they would have rankings would have held from December twelfth. Anyway, yeah, that, just, I don't like the present that sets. Okay, oh, we got a better guy in the lineup. Well, that's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Division three features 14 of 24 teams ranked in the top 25, including 11 of the top 15. Six ranked teams will have to navigate through those preliminary bouts as number 11, Coe, will face Manchester, with the winner facing number 9, Farum. Number 15, Wisconsin Lacrosse, opens up with Wheaton. Uh, and also, uh, I don't want to say shout-out, but uh, thoughts are with the Wheaton wrestling community as a longtime coach and uh, basically the programs like Patriarch, so to speak. Pete Wilson passed away at the end of December. But Wheaton will face uh, the, the winner of lacrosse. Wheaton will face the winner. Well, actually, will face Baldwin Wallace, who is one of those teams with a bye. Baldwin Wallace, as you heard on the Ice Hour last week, Coach Jamie Gibbs, they lead the nation in Division Three in terms of number of dual meet victories with 11. The number 17 Maroons of the University of Chicago, charter members of the Big Ten. Well, factoid, they'll face the Student Princes, and any time I can say Student Princes on this program, I'm super excited about that. Chicago and Heidelberg will square off with the winner facing fourth rank, Ithaca. The Polar Bears, yeah, this is why I love Division Division Three and these small, you get all sorts of stuff. Number 24, Ohio Northern, they are the Polar Bears. We'll start off with the Red Dragons of Cortland State, who wore the Red Dragon shirt yesterday, with the winner earning the right to take on five-time champion and third-ranked Augsburg. Olivet will take on Augustana, the, the one in Illinois, with the winner to face Wartburg, while NYU and Milliken will wrap up the prelims with the winner taking on to advance, or taking on to advance, with the winner advancing to face Johnson and Wales. Individually, nine of the top ten wrestlers in Division Three are in the mix, including returning national champions, the aforementioned Eric DeVos of Wartburg, Jordan Newman of Wisconsin Whitewater at 197. Uh, Wabash's Devin Brokel did win a national championship in 2016 at 133 pounds. Haven't seen him in action this year. In all, 57 wrestlers ranked in the top 10 in D3 will be in Fort Wayne. Yeah, they only rank 10 D. Now, we know Wartburg's done really, really well in Division 3. The dominance has been pretty much prevalent since the event's inception. Grandview's dominance, on the other hand, has been prevalent since its own inception. The Vikings are eyeing a sixth straight National Duels championship and the program's first nine years. Yeah. 
six titles. They're going for six titles in nine years. So that would be like, okay, you're one, you're two. Yeah, we did anything. Okay, yeah. They, yeah, they've got they, 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 yeah, they've got a lot of titles already. Last year, Grandview went 42-8 and eight in individual matches and defeated Indiana Tech in the championship round for the second year in a row. Grandview enters number one, not surprisingly, a perch they've held in the NAIA polls for 42 straight ranking weeks. The field also includes a total of 12 ranked teams, including the top seven. National champions Josh Wenger, Grant Henderson, and Evan Hansen, along with Dean Broghammer, are all Grandview national champions. Coming to the party in the mayhem in Fort Wayne. Second-ranked Missouri Valley is placed in the top eight 12 different times. They, too, are the Vikings. They haven't reached a final since the event expanded beyond four teams in 2006. They'll open up with unranked Jamestown before facing the winner of either Providence, which used to be Great Falls, and Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. KC Rock has to coach smart people in Prescott, Arizona. As we continue on, Indiana Tech coming in ranked third. They've been a force in the NAI since their program started in 2011-2012. The Warriors. Warriors! Come out and play! Yeah, I just, I'm on a kick with 80s movies for some reason. Warriors have placed in the top seven each of the last four seasons, and they will open with unranked Cumberland University. That's in Tennessee. We'll get to that in a minute. With a winner facing either fifth-ranked Williams Baptist or 15th-ranked Baker. Williams Baptist is led by returning NAIA heavyweight national champion Demetrius Thomas, who will may or may not wrestle because he was actually wrestling in the Southern Scuffle, like right now as I record this. DNP, but uh, that's pretty good. Coach Chris Flieger, yes, that Chris Flieger has a division leading three top ranked wrestlers for fourth ranked, ready for this, University of the Cumberlands, which is in Kentucky. No, one of those ranked wrestlers is not a lime green Buddha. However, three of those four weights, manned by Hayden Lee, Jake Sinkovics, and Trey Leon, the Patriots are our formidable squad and can get momentum going in their direction in a hurry. Cumberlands, as they're affectionately known, shortened, will open with unranked Midland with the winner facing either 7th-ranked Life. That's a chiropractic school, y'all. They are the running Eagles. Or 19th-ranked Concordia University of Nebraska. Yes, the Bulldogs. Life is led by top-ranked 197 hunter Dalton Bailey. Like Division Three, nine of the top-ranked wrestlers in the NAIA are set to compete with, get this, 115 wrestlers who ranked in the top 20. The NAIA, yeah, they go 20 deep, and you can actually have two wrestlers per team competing in the postseason in rank, but uh, that's just, that's that's a lot. Teams from the National Junior College Athletic Association joined the National Bulls Spray in 2004. Clackamas Community College out of Oregon City, Oregon, is going for a record fifth straight National Bulls title in the division. I had to say that, clarify that. Fifth straight in the division. 2011, they played spoiler and claimed it their first title when they prevented Iowa Central from winning their fifth, or its fifth in that case. It's versus their. It's if it's the school there, if it's the mascot. So if I said Triton's there, Iowa Central fits. Anyway, grammar lesson over. Uh, they'll, you know, whoever cares, uh, they'll have to avoid the same fate, and they'll meaning uh, Clackamas will have to avoid that same fate in a field that includes 12 ranked teams, including two time team runners up, the Golden Norseman of Northeastern Oklahoma AM. They're just NEO for short, folks. Clackamas, which boasts a lineup of names some of you may recognize from uh, age group success, maybe even some Division One stuff, open up with unranked Triton, with a winner facing either number 13, Northwest Kansas Tech, or 17th ranked Lincoln. Clackamas Hammers include returning NJCA champions Dayton Racer, who won last year for Iowa Central, or former D1 wrestlers Ralphie Tovar, who started his career at Grand Canyon, Dylan Real, who started his career at Minnesota, and Gage Hera, who started his career at Drexel. Northwest Kansas Tech is going to try PA announcers like crazy. They bring the top-ranked heavyweight. Ogdurel Vatshichig, a native of Mongolia, comes in ranked number one. Down in the bottom half of the bracket, NEO will open up with 23rd-ranked Colby Community College. The Golden Norseman, that's of NEO, finished second in the last two of the three national duels and are led by returning NJCA champion Wyatt Jordan at 165. The winner of NEO and Colby will face either 11th-ranked Southwestern Oregon Community College or 15th-ranked Nassau Community College, which returns to the national duels after a number of years competing in the American Division at the Virginia Duels. Paul Schmidt and his crew, good people there. Nassau, they won the first two NJCAA National Duels Championship. Fourth-ranked Iowa Lakes is the third seed will face unranked Harper in the opening round with the winner facing 14th-ranked Barton or Western Wyoming. Iowa Western... Yeah, you get more on that in a second. They come in ranked fifth and is seeded fourth. They are the Reavers. The Reavers. Yeah. Not Retrievers, the Reavers. They'll open up with Labette, 
a two-time winner of the National Duels with a winner facing either the Yellow Jackets of Rochester or Spartanburg Methodist. Shout out to you, Mr. Matt Oliver. Individual, 52 wrestlers in the Junior College Division are ranked individually. Now, thank you, Julia Salata, our assistant at King University of their women's program for just making sure I didn't screw any of the following up because you got to make sure that the women do get there. This is a good division. It's growing, folks. The growth of women's wrestling comes the growth of the women's portion of the national duels. Julia, thank you for, again, making sure I didn't botch any of this. This started as a tri-meet, and the WCA tournament is now up to 14 teams, 12 of which are ranked in the top 20, and every team founded after 2000. Most of them founded in the last 18 years. The depth, actually, that's kind of saying the same thing. The depth and quality has improved. King University has won the last four National Bulls titles, but they're in a bit of a rebuilding season, and second-ranked Campbellsville seems to be the front-runner as top-ranked Simon Frazier not competing this year. Uh, makes sense. They're from Canada. Seated first, Campbellsville will have a first-round bye, as will the number two seed, McKendry, and with a little over a month to go in the WCWA season. This is one of the final team events they'll use to peak before heading in to the WCWA Nationals in Oklahoma City. Campbellsville will face the winner of the Life U University of the Cumberlands duel, and Life under first-year coach Ashley Sword has made pretty good gains. They lost coach Dave Matthews. He went and took a job at USA Wrestling. My friend Ashley, longtime friend Ashley, we have known each other for like almost 20 years. It's crazy. Uh, now she's a Division One. I'm Division One. She is a women's college coach, which is kind of cool. Uh, they've made considerable gains this season. King will be seated fourth, and they'll be hard pressed to tie Oklahoma City's record of five straight titles uh, since they've already lost once this season to Campbellsville. The tornado open up with Jamestown, and the winner facing either Emmanuel or Missouri Valley in the top bracket. Missouri Valley, oldest team currently competing in the WCWA, founded in 2000. Wayland Baptist is the third seed. Fifth-ranked Pioneers haven't seen much dual action this year, and they'll open with Southwestern Oregon in the opening round with a winner facing either Grays Harbor College or Missouri Baptist. McKendry, which, like Wayland Baptist, has seen limited dual meet competition, according to my very unofficial dual meet records. Uh, both teams are only want to know. The Bearcats will face the winner of either the uh, they'll face the winner of Eastern Oregon and Oklahoma City. Fifty-three wrestlers ranked in the top eight. King University, of course, has two-time WCWA champion Marina Doy. Campbellsville has three-time champion Kayla Miracle. She's going for her fourth title that this year, which kind of means that she's a three-time champion. Uh, Campbellsville also has national champion Andrew Beth Rivera on the roster, but she sat out of competition for the first semester. She could be there, uh, provided they don't redshirt or if uh, they just want to uh, deploy to win a national title. Cody Fow, a two-time national champion at Oklahoma City, is back now wrestling for one last shot at Emmanuel College. With that, that is how not to do a book on tape. That is Matt Mayhem, all the results and streaming live on track wrestling this weekend. That's, yeah, so a 22-minute short time shots. That's, that's, that's just not cool, man. Anyway, thank you for spending your time with me. You've always got time for short time. And uh, if you, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to blend it. Yeah. You like the show? This is atypical. It's not really how the show typically goes, but I'm enjoying it. Yes. Uh, oh, and by the way, yeah, you've seen some Twitter interactions. Still working. Playing a lot of phone tag with Jay Moore right now. He's going to be on the show soon. How soon? I don't know, but uh, soon. Hopefully. Soon. Rate and review at iTunes. Tell your friends. Be happy. And again, thank you for spending your time with me. Because as I just said, trying to screw up my clothes, you've always got time for a short time. Happy New Year, people. The Short Time Wrestling Podcast is proudly outfitted by Compound Clothing. Shirts, singlets, custom gear orders, everything you need. Call up Cliff and the crew at cmpteamwear.com. First time listening? Well, you can change that by going to matttalkonline.com slash get short time to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or listen on your favorite podcatcher at matttalkonline.com slash listen. This show is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.